Mon cher Luc, cher Marie, cher Ainoa, Madame la conseillère culturelle, chère Bénédicte, qui est ici, évidemment là, c'est aussi que notre Ainoa, c'est notre Council General, Soon to be ambassador, it's not a secret, Monsieur Bertrand, so congratulations. Uh, dear friends, it's such a pleasure and privilege to welcome you here all tonight to uh, the French mission to the UN as we honor our dear friend Luc Hardy, a veteran French American entrepreneur a passionate explorer and environmental advocate, and if I may, an extraordinary individual whom I'm honored to consider a friend. I would like to extend a warm welcome to Luke's family and friends who have joined us here this evening to express their support and admiration, with a special word of appreciation to uh, his dear wife, Mary, our co-hero, Uh, this evening, if I may, and of course their daughter, Ainoa, and Ainoa will also raise her hands. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, uh, the National Order of Merit that I'm going to bestow upon Luke in a few minutes is one of France's uh, very highest distinctions. It was established by General de Gaulle in 1963 to reward major services rendered to France on the basis of uh, personal merit. I don't resist mentioning General de Gaulle to uh, tell you the story about uh, President Kennedy and Madame Kennedy going to France for a state visit for a long time ago. And for whatever reason, uh, Madame Kennedy uh, was very much uh, impressed and intimidated by General de Gaulle. So here she comes, Jackie Kennedy, you know, star. Here she comes, and she said to General de Gaulle, Mon général, and she wanted to break the ice, you know, Mon général, you know, I have French roots. And she was expecting the kind of warm American welcome. And General de Gaulle, aloof, only looked at her and said, I have two, madame. Mon cher Louis, before presenting you with the insignia, I would like to take a moment to retrace your truly unique and uh, fascinating journey. You were born in Lyon in 1956 when your father was fashioned here, but your true origins are in Brittany near Saint Malo, where you spent most of your early years when not studying in Paris. You had quite a cosmopolitan childhood in no small part, part thanks to your father, who was in the military. After serving in Vietnam, which was then part of uh, French and the China, he traveled a lot for his various assignments. With him, you developed a particular interest in photography and stamps, as well as a passion for travel. During the summer of your baccalaureate at 18, you drove from Paris to Greece through the former Yugoslavia. Your brilliant academic achievements got you into Central Paris, one of France's very top engineering schools and one of the very pop top engineering schools in the world. And at Central, and I know that several of you also went to Central, you did your two internships in Nigeria and then South Africa. This passion for travel has become very much part of your DNA and it goes hand in hand with an insatiable curiosity, Inte intellectual curiosity for sure, but also a curiosity about unknown countries and first and foremost, curiosity about people. And I'm glad also to welcome Marie-Monique Stekel, the head of uh, French Institute Alliance Française, who uh, uh, joined us. <laughs> you love people. You simply love people who love you right back. And altruism and serving others are second nature for you, Monsieur. You've had a remarkable career path, 
I could speak volumes about it. You got your start at Colgate Palmolive in 1979, and were recruited two years later by Mars & Co., an international consulting firm where you worked on the American, European, and Asian markets. You soon, very soon actually, discovered a taste, and it's too big a word, taste for entrepreneurship. And in 1987, you founded your own venture capital company, Sagax, if I pronounce correctly, based here in New York, with branches in Paris and uh, Silicon Valley. The company was a great success story from the beginning and specializes in financing startups and innovative projects, particularly in the uh, internet and the high-tech world. This is how you became an angel investor and, as I said, a veteran French-American entrepreneur, <coughs> reminding us all that entrepreneur is a French word. <laughs> you have been advising innovative startups for almost 30 years with an emphasis on French tech startups willing and able to expand into the American market. Over the years, more than 100 entrepreneurs have benefited from your advice and have literally created thousands of jobs and billions of dollars of value. But this spectacular success was not enough for you. At heart, you are an eco-adventurer, an explorer, and as I said, an environmental advocate. When you are not relaxing in your TP in Connecticut, <laughs> pursue the personal goal of traveling extensively across the globe, photographing and reporting from remote places in order to raise awareness for global causes. It's your secret garden, or rather your secret ice flow. Over the years, you have led several expeditions, indeed, in polar and glacier regions, combining your travels with meaningful research. To mention just a few, actually I could mention really a lot, but to mention just a few, otherwise you would not come again if I'm too long. In 2003, you went to Antarctica to highlight the region's importance as a regulator of global weather systems. In 2007, you led a team of scientists to Greenland to explore the effects of climate change on local wildlife. Other expeditions included the Himalayas in uh, 2009 and an expedition to the North Pole in 2011 with a focus on Greenland. Speaking of Greenland, and there is really no relationship, I would also like to uh, greet my dear friend, the ambassador of Morocco, who is here with us this evening. Mon cher Omar, thank you very, very much for sharing this very important moment with us. And I know Luke and, and you have been friends for a lot of years. In the fall of 2014, you led a nine-person expedition in the Antarctic Ocean in the footsteps of one of the greatest legends of the golden age of polar exploration, Sir Ernest Shackleton. In 1914, for those of you who may have a doubt about uh, Sir Shackleton's uh, action, in 1914, after the sinking of his ship, the Endurance, this hero, literally hero, saved his uh, entire crew from certain death. 100 years later, your expedition brought to the heart of the Antarctic nine adventurers from very different backgrounds, but with a common passion for testing the limits. They experienced, you experienced, an extraordinary adventure. Based on this expedition, you co-authored and produced a wonderful film, Pursuit of Endurance, which premiered at the Focus on French Cinema Festival in Greenwich in April 2015, and was then screened at several prestigious film festivals in France and in the US. And I had the privilege of attending its screening at the UN here in New York on the eve of the opening of the General Assembly in September 2015. The screening was both a uh, tremendous success and a very powerful and uh, moving experience. Many of, many of you were here, 
and I'm glad to see uh, Catherine and uh, Etienne Amérez and many others representing the uh, uh, Greenwich Festival that I so much admire. Most of the expeditions you've led have included children who serve as youth ambassadors and witnesses to the dramatic climate changes occurring in these regions. Indeed, your commitment and your efforts are focused on bearing witness to the uh, devastating impacts of global warming. This is probably the fight of your life, amassing scientific proof through on-the-ground observation and thereby convincing policymakers to take the drastic measures that need to be taken and that are truly uh, imperative. The success of the Paris Climate Conference this past December, which I had the privilege uh, to uh, attend, is an important step in that direction. But we all know it's not enough, it's only a step. We must continue our joint efforts to create a low carbon economy. This is, I believe, one of the challenges of our generation, and this is literally a vital challenge. In this spirit, your travels have been the subject of several fascinating books, including Antarctic Adventure in 2004, Greenland Impressions in 2007, and Arctic Transitions in 2008. You're also an avid and expert photographer, as I said, who has been published in many prestigious publications and exhibitions. And a selection of your Arctic work is under your watch, currently available uh, online and in galleries in France and New York via Yellow Corner, if I'm not mistaken. To promote, so this is the end of my introduction, <laughs> <laughs> to promote awareness of the threats facing the Arctic and polar regions, in 2003, you founded your own organization, Pax Arctica Initiative, based here in New York, and whose mission is to alert the public the profound climatic transformations that are, that are affecting, again, the most sensitive regions of the globe. You're also the Secretary General, Secretary General of Green Cross International France, the environmental NGO founded by the former uh, Russian leader Michael Gorbachev and headed by famous Jean-Michel Cousteau. And you're a member of the New York Explorers Club, very famous club, and the American Polar Society. Mon cher Luc, I hope, I truly hope, that someday someone will write your biography. <laughs> and actually, I volunteer. <laughs> and there are witnesses. <laughs> Indeed, your life is simply extraordinary. Your talents and achievements multifaceted, and your commitment to serving others, whether helping high-tech entrepreneurs or working to save our planet is a deep source of admiration and inspiration for many, many, and certainly for me. So on behalf of Francis President, and in recognition of your many accomplishments and your commitment to French-American friendship, it is now, is now my privilege to bestow upon you the insignia of Chevalier in the Legion, in the National Order of Merit, I have to say just a few words in French before you applaud. <laughs> before you Luc Hardy, au nom du président de la République et en vertu des pouvoirs qui me sont conférés, je vous fais chevalier dans l'ordre national du mérite. does not really exist, so <laughs> I'm just going to say a few words uh, instead. Thank you all for being here. I know you had uh, some of you to uh, shorten your vacation to be here tonight or to meet the second half of the uh, soccer game. So thank, thank you all. It's just an excuse for uh, 
gathering a few friends and uh, wishing one another a, uh, a great summer. Uh, truly, I still don't know to this day where this uh, nomination is coming from. I assume, uh, you know, some polar bears or whales or penguins somewhere and maybe some uh, friendly, uh, friendly, maybe some uh, friendly uh, diplomats as well. So thank you, uh, François, uh, very much. Uh, thank you also, uh, Bertrand, our Consul General, uh, soon to be Ambassador to Vietnam, but it's a top secret, so don't <laughs> say that. Uh, you've been very, very helpful over the years to uh, to promote the uh, French tech uh, here in the U.S. and especially in New York, a cause which is uh, very uh, dear uh, to me and uh, and uh, a lot of us uh, here in this room. And also, thank you for uh, being a uh, part of the French effort to uh, to make sure that France is a leader in uh, the, the fight against uh, climate change, uh, both here in, in the U.S. and all over the world. Uh, so this really came uh, as, a, as a surprise. Uh, truly, uh, I, I should really share this honor with the 100 plus entrepreneurs I've helped uh, over the years, uh, mostly French entrepreneurs, uh, you know, some of, some of whom have uh, failed, but have repeatedly tried. and. Uh, and uh, it, it eventually uh, succeeded. Um, also, the uh, 25 uh, plus interns uh, have literally tortured uh, over the years. Uh, the latest of, of whom is uh, Elisair, who is uh, in the back here in hiding. Thank you, Elisair, just joined me uh, in, uh, in Greenwich. And also, the um, Many uh, great uh, scientists and uh, NGO workers and uh, volunteers um, whom I've had the privilege to, to meet in uh, many different countries uh, over the years. Um, with a, uh, actually a special thank also to uh, Michel Rocard, who passed away last week, as you know, and who was uh, uh, the uh, French ambassador to uh, for the polar regions, uh, whom I had the privilege to meet a few times. Uh, uh, one of them was uh, near the North Pole, of all uh, of all places, and we had a few chats uh, uh, a few times, uh, meaning that he did all the talking. Uh, as, uh, as, as you know. And um, um, the um, last but not least, I really want to thank my. Um, uh, family, uh, Mary here, I know her, and uh, we thank Georgetown graduate from this great future, I hope. And uh, also our daughter Flan, who is in uh, California now studying uh, agroecology at uh, Santa Cruz uh, University and uh, studying on a, on a farm. And um, last but not least, my uh, parents, my mom, who never took the plane, and even though I told her, you know, mom, it's a great. Uh, Thing. Maybe you should do something with it. No, even for that. Staying in Paris, enjoy, but uh, I'm not going to fly ever. So, and uh, my dad, as uh, Francois mentioned, has been a great inspiration in uh, photography, travel, and, uh, and just uh, making sure uh, we, the three uh, boys we were would uh, stay uh, curious and, uh, and uh, open open. So thank you all again. And, uh, I know you didn't come here to hear me talk, but you have a great uh, champagne and uh, legendary <laughs> French food, so here it is. Enjoy and uh, have a great summer, and I uh, hope uh, part of the summer will be with uh, uh, some of you, wherever, wherever you, you are. Thank you again. Thank you. Oh, now I know.